I thank the gentleman. Mr. Speaker, I rise today in support of 1963, the Caregivers and Veterans Omnibus Health Services Act of 2009. As members of Congress, we do have a responsibility to provide the best support we can to our nation's veterans with provisions for caregiver support, rural health improvement, and mental health benefits. There are many reasons why I support this legislation. I could speak at length about these important and necessary benefits. However, in the interest of time, I'd like to highlight just one, health care for women veterans. While more and more women are joining the military, the VA's health care system for women veterans have not kept pace. Although approximately 14 percent of our troops are female, as a female veteran recently said in an interview with Good Housekeeping magazine, it's as if women were Martians, abnormalities, descending on the VA health care system. In fact, of the country's 153 VA medical centers, only about ha half even have a gynecologist on staff. This despite the fact that between 23 and 29 percent of all female veterans seeking medical care through the VA have reported experience in sexual assault. Is it any surprise then that the number of female veterans being treated for post-traumatic stress disorder rose from 1 to 19 percent in only four years? For this reason, my colleague, Representative Herseth Sandlin, and I introduced uh, H.R. 1211, the Women's Veterans Health Improvement Act. Although the Senate has not acted on our legislation, I'm happy to see some of the key provisions, like studying barriers for women recovering, uh, receiving VA health care, and developing a plan to improve that care for women veterans, both immediately and in the long term, that it actually made it into this bill. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker, and I yield back the balance of my time. General A. D. O. 